this is the first video. Welcome to the first motorcycle video of the new Delvoy Scarings, the new refitted system. Thank you for all of your support on everything with this. It's been an amazing journey for the last few weeks. Thank you to Seely for all they did in helping us get the right stuff, make the right choices, and tell us that it would work for the faith that it took. It was a big investment, and we hope it makes the videos that little bit better. Now, the first video I want to get involved in is an oil change and full service on my Harley Davidson Softail. Now, Harleys are quite complicated to service. Well, let me rephrase that. They're not complicated. There's nothing complex about servicing Harley Davidson. It's just quite a lot of it. There are five fluids to change in Harley Davidson. You have the engine oil, you have the primary transmission oil, the gearbox oil, which is separate, three different oils. You also have the fork oil and the brake fluid. So those five fluids over the course of usage and time, they will break down. That's how any service that's what it centers on. It's the changing of those fluids. Engine oil, gearbox oil, and the primary transmission oil, they break down over time or with mileage and use. The molecular structure of the oil breaks down, they stop protecting the engine, which is what they're there to do, and they also get contaminated with condensation, so therefore water, and that's all bad. The other two oils, the fork oil, that's the same thing, it eventually breaks down, the forks don't perform as well, and it gets contaminated again with water, because you've got a warm atmosphere, cold steel creates condensation, even inside a fork leg, because that's just the way it is. That's the laws of physics, Jim. And the final thing is the brake fluid, obviously every two years. Now the brake, I've been through the history of my heart, all the service receipts when you go through on Harley Davidson when you get it serviced at the dealer when the previous owner is wealthy enough to get it serviced as the previous owner of this was at the dealership then you get detailed receipts and I'm very lucky that I've been through them and I found out exactly when the last things were done the last time the brake fluid was changed in this was three years ago definitely overdue the last time the fork oil was changed in this bike was 2010, so seven years ago. That definitely needs to be changed as well. Also, the engine. Now, the engine oil takes about four liters, three point, it's three and a half quarts according to the manuals, which is 3.9 liters, so effectively that's four liters. You can't buy a four pack of this Sin 3. I'm using this screaming it was Sin 3. It is the best oil. You can talk about it all day, read the forums. It's got a great reputation. It's an oil that exceeds all of the oils that highly recommend. Harley Davidson will recommend an engine oil and a primary oil and a gearbox oil like Formula Plus or all that sort of thing and they all conform to what they need for the bike. But this Sin 3 product, it exceeds all of those. So you can just simply buy six litres of that through the whole bike. There's a litre roughly for the gearbox and a litre also for the primary transmission. So I'll be doing all of those. Now, rather than make a big windy two hour video, which nobody will watch, also it'd be difficult to go through. If you're just trying to do a gearbox oil change on your Harley Davidson, then to try and look at a two and a half hour video and find that bit that you need to look at is really boring and awkward and it doesn't help you at all. So instead of that, I'm gonna do a series. This will be, as you can see, this is part one. And if you look in our channel, it, there will be a playlist. If you look in the playlist, it will be Harley Softail Service playlist, and there'll be about half a dozen videos, and I will add to it as time goes on. And this is the first one. And all it will do today, I'm gonna to change the gearbox oil. It's the simplest of the whole lot. The gearbox, that's the basic transmission, the one that, the final drive transmission, we're gonna change the oil in that. It's extremely simple. I'll talk to you about the oil itself as we get involved in it, but really it is one train plug, one fill plug, job done. It's as simple as that. So if you bite or break your service pr uh, procedure for the whole bike down into bite-sized pieces, it will be easier and simpler to do, less intimidating and a little bit easier. Don't you think, Pam? Yes, you will. It does. Now, we looked at the service history. The last time this bike had a full major service, it cost the owner £700. He paid £700 because he had the fork oil changed and he had the, uh, the brake fluid change as well. 700 pounds he paid for that service. Normally the cost of servicing on this bike in the past, even when it was a basic oil system, it was 400 pounds. Now I went to the Harley dealer, I spoiled the bike rotten, I bought the best I could for the job that I want to do. The best oil filter, proper Harley Davidson plugs, Screaming Eagle Sin 3 oil, and a proper gasket set for the primary side which you need, and all the right O-rings. So I spared no expense, and still I only spent 100 and 51 pounds. That was on all of the parts that I need for this service. 151 pounds is all this service is gonna cost me. So if you do this yourself, think of that as the cost of the service because there's nothing we're gonna embark on in the next five videos 
that is taxing, difficult or complex that you can't do? We're at the end of the comments box. If you're not sure, ask. So let's get kicked off with video one, which is changing the gearbox oil or final transmission oil, and then see how you get on with that. That is the easiest one of all. Let's go on with it. All right then, for part one of this series of videos, we're gonna do the gearbox or transmission. Call it what you like. There are two transmissions on a soft tail. You've got the primary drive transmission over the other side. That's the big casing. And this little one here, this is the final drive transmission or gearbox as we call it. It's quite simple. It's got about a pint and a half of oil in it. We're gonna drain it out and put some more in. It's as simple as that. This is just about the simplest task that you can carry out in your servicing. And hopefully doing this one first will give you a little bit of confidence towards the others. So the easiest thing with this, you take a 3.8 drive Allen key, and this is the filler cap here. The filler cap is also the dipstick, so we just pop a big 3.8 drive Allen key in that, break the seal. Now this has got a rubber O-ring in it as a seal, and all I'm doing is backing it out to there, so that the rubber O-ring is showing, and some silver thread showing in there as well, which means that that's loose, it's moving around as well. So that means that air can get in. Quite simply, if you're trying to drain the oil out, especially if this is quite thick oil in here, it's not gonna drain it out very well if the air can't get in. So first thing to do, like any oil change practically, just undo the filler cap a little bit to let the air in. Next, let's hit the drain plug, but not before we put a pan under it. <laughs> and using a, a simple trick with a ring spanner, on there, I'm just going to crack that like that. Okay, so a gearbox is obviously a big busy space of meshing cogs. So that metal's grinding together the whole time. This bike's done 32,000 miles. There will be wear and tear. That wear manifests itself in pieces of the metal wearing off. Simple as that. So this little plug at the bottom, this little tiny magnet, gathers all of the wear and tear on itself and stops it floating around and getting jammed in between the cogs yet again and causing more damage so it doesn't become uh, counterproductive uh, that's a good idea and effectively the fact that there's a little bit of, of metal filings on it isn't a bad thing it's just wear and tear as long as there aren't big chips if you've got big pieces sticking to it then that means you've got big pieces of the teeth inside the gearbox chipping off and that's all bad so you probably need to get a little inspection get that stripped and that might be a job for the dealer but for yourself if you open that up and this is all you've got a little bit of gray um, residue which you can't even feel as metal and a few basic filings not an issue absolutely not an issue at all that's correct now let's have a quick look at the oil itself because we're looking for contamination in the oil that's the next telltale now we looked at the, the drain plug itself looking for silver deposits or any grit or any silver bits of chips of metal and this is the oil i put a perfectly clean drain pan under it this is the oil it's still semi see-through but it doesn't get any carbon in it it's just a gear washing oil as you can see here if you look there are little tiny silver specks right, this is a thirty thousand mile harley gearbox so I come that way Again, in this corner, when you run the oil away, you get these little tiny silver specks. So it's quite healthy. They're little tiny, tiny, tiny specks. They're nothing serious. What you're looking for is chips about the size of, well, anything bigger than a grain of sand, then that's possibly something to have a little consider. And then when you do the next gearbox oil change, double check it again. If it's getting worse, then you need to get that gearbox apart and find out what's gone wrong in there. It could be a bearing, it could be something else breaking down, but initially, that is very healthy indeed. Right, where in the past somebody has used the wrong size socket on this, there were a couple of bruises just on the corner of the bolt head, which is the same, the sump plug. So rather than spend 25 pounds on a new sump plug, I'm just refurbishing this one so it's perfect. There we go. Now, an O-ring, let's have a look. Right, 
going to do is show you what a mess this gets into. This is the old O-ring, and a lot of people will use an old O-ring, especially if you haven't got a new one. And you see this one's got a little bit of sealant on it, which is not necessary. That's what the O-ring's for itself, and that is not reusable. So taking it off, there's, like I said, that's a little bit of silicon or something. Nothing wrong with that, it's all good. Just check it all around and check the health of the thread. Go over this thread as carefully as you can and make sure there are no disruptions in it at all because this being steel is hard. And if you've got a disruption in the thread on that and it's a bit sharp, remember the casing is aluminium and that will effectively be softer and that sharp thread could damage it and before you know it, you're on the way to a, to a stripped thread on the gearbox and that needs an awful lot of work to fix, it truly does work. Let's just get into this. Oh, that's that one. And there it is, it's clearly looking at the old one, like that, it's one of those two. So I'm gonna pop one of those two out of there. That's the O-ring, okay? It's gonna pop that on there. And that is now ready to bolt back into the motor. But there's one more thing I'm gonna to do to it, and it's what I do every time with oil plugs. I'll show you now. Okay, getting the plug itself ready to go back in. I'm just using some Hylomar. Now, I've been using this since I trained as a bus fitter many years ago and it's just a blue non-drying sealant all you do is wipe a little bit of it around the thread like that now it acts in two ways it's a lubricant on the thread itself so it it eases the thread into place every time you do a thread up to a given torque setting that setting, that torque value recommended in the manual, is always a torque value that is recommended on a lubricated thread. No torque value is ever relevant on a bone dry thread because a metal to metal bone dry thread will create drag and that drag will fool the torque wrench into thinking that it's done up and it will click early and that bolt won't be done up as tightly as it should be. And if a little oil gets down it, then you've got a loose thing moving around a loose plug and you can get drips and that's right in front of your rear wheel. So you don't want leaks, make sure that that's a lubricated thread. You can put a little bit of oil on it, that's absolutely fine, you can put copper slip on it, whatever, but this has got an O-ring, it goes into a torque setting, it is a drain plug. All drain plugs can benefit from a little bit of blue Hylomar. Okay, if you don't know what it is, I've said it a million times, Marston's Blue Hylomar is fantastic for drain plugs because it never ever dries. It stays sticky forever which is why it's another reason when you use it, never come in in pen, make sure that it is only on the thread, literally in the grooves of the thread, and do not get any, never get any on the tip where the magnet is, because if it shrouds the magnet, the magnet can't do its job. As this now bolts in, that Hylomar will push downwards and that magnet will be perfectly exposed into the quantity bolt. the oil out that's 700 mils one and a quarter pints that's taken out of the gearbox and that was at the correct level so I'm going to use about 700 mils that's about what I'm aiming for bottle's got marks on it so I can use that now I just want to talk about it very quickly before I actually stick it in there and that's the job done it's sin 3 screaming eagle sin 3 exceeds every other oil that Harley use you can put formula plus in this which is the gearbox oil recommended by Harley for this bike in the manual. The Formula Plus is a 50 weight oil. It's a mono 50 weight grade oil, SAE 50. This is a 2050 multi grade, which means it performs like a 50 weight, but it's smoother 
because when it's obviously cold, it's a 20 weight, so it flows like a 20 weight, but it protects like a 50 weight. So there's a lot of conjecture, a lot of reading if you want to do it on the internet about multi-grade oils. Multi-grade oil is always better than a mono-grade oil because it's more adaptable, more flexible, gives you a wider range of protection. And this is way better, fully synthetic, SIN 3, is way better than the Formula Plus that this bike has had all its life, so we're treating this to a little upgrade. And that was only a few pounds more for a litre, or a quart there, than it would have been for the Formula Plus. So I'm upgrading to that, as I am with everything else on the bike. So there we are, 700 mils, that's the old stuff. That's just dirt and grit and bits of steel and all sorts of stuff, goodness knows what. Let's put the clean stuff in. Right, and there you've got a little cast, die cast steel or alloy, whatever that's made from, dipstick with a full and a low level. Pretty straightforward. Now, when you dip this, all the different bikes have a various method on this. Engine oil in a Triumph, you always screw the cap in, but on this you don't. When you are checking the level on the dipstick on your gearbox, you just put the dipstick in and let the thread rest against the seat. That's it. Don't screw that in. Leave it like that. Sitting on the outside, that's where it measures the level from. And you take that back out and you can check where it is on there. I'm about halfway up, so I just dry that back off. Another double check. And there it is, just on the F of full. Perfect. There we go. And screw that back in. Now, just before I do, to mention the O ring on this is a lot longer lived than the O ring underneath, and I'm choosing not to replace that. It is an o-ring that's designed to keep the weather out more than the oil in. Just whip it off a minute. Just check it, go all around it, make sure there are no nicks in it or no little frays in it. If there is, replace it and you can replace it later on if you need to, but that one's absolutely fine. So I'll just use the old one on that one. There we are, that's the first of the fluid changes, the big raft of fluid changes on a big Harley service, the gearbox oil change. Pretty straightforward, wasn't it? Not difficult at all, nice and clean. Now, the next one is just as simple as that. It's the primary chain case oil. Ever so simple, so join us for part two for that. It's a drain plug, just the same. It fills up with a big Derby cover. And whilst we've got the Derby cover off, we're gonna roll neatly into video three, which will be the clutch adjustment as well. And we know that that'll help lots and lots of people, won't it? It will. There we are. So that was the first one of the stack. Not difficult, is it, at all? Any questions, drop them in the box underneath. Thanks for watching. Take it easy. Ride safe. See you for the next one.